Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we ever do every Tuesday and Thursday, folks. And don't forget, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, it's, it's kind of, let's look at the S&Ps first. Okay, uh, one second. Let me, let me, yep, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there right now. One second. All right, no hurry. There we go. Okay, I'm ready. I have it. All right. Well, anyhow, it's, it's kind of a repeat, but really you got to look at the bigger picture and you kind of work backwards. So it's, okay. it's, you've seen this too. they probably seen it last week. So, But it's, all, it's still relevant, so we we'll are keep looking at it. But anyhow, the bottom window is the SPX fix ratio. Yes. And this uh, ratio yesterday closed at 440.77, I think it was. And today we're at 448.99. Uh, so it's actually higher today than yesterday. You can't really tell it. But that's a really a good sign because you want this ratio to work higher as the S&Ps is working higher. And that's what's going on. On This is a monthly chart. So okay. It's not a daily or weekly. So it still remains bullish on the monthly chart. So, it's, uh, uh, so anyhow, bigger trend is up. Yep. So let's flip to uh, chart two. Okay. And we actually went over this chart. And uh, Tuesday, we had a bearish divergence where the SPs were making higher highs and this SPX VIX ratio on a daily time frame, not a monthly, but a daily frame, made lower highs. And I, I shaded that in light uh, pink yeah. to, to show that. Well, yesterday, uh, the market gapped above what I was calling a head and shoulders bottom, and the, the ratio went right with it, made a new high a short-term new high. So that negative divergence now is, on a short-term basis, now a positive divergence. So I, I was predicting that there was a head and shoulders bottom forming, and I thought we might pull back to 520 or uh, 5250 on the SPX. Well, it, it was a head and, red, head and shoulders bottom, in my opinion. We did jump above the neckline. We did have, a, if you look at the bottom window, there's a, a volume chart. Yes. Yeah, it did show an increase in volume. So you jumped above the neckline with the sign of strength, that's SOS, and so you created a gap there, and that gap may get filled short-term, may not, don't know. But with the daily showing higher highs on the SPX VIX ratio, uh, we're going to go higher. Uh, not saying we're going to test that gap at some point. We may test it. But in general, uh uh, the pullback that I thought may happen, I don't. Think, I think the worst case scenario now is basically pullback to where the neckline is, which is right around uh, uh, 5375 range. That's where the neckline lies, and you may get a pullback to that neckline, which is also where that gap is. I see. So that's about the worst case scenario. So okay, um, I think uh, the trend is up. Flip to chart three. I have it. All right. Um, we said, uh, I think, Tuesday, you always got to have panic at a low. If you don't have panic, it's not a low. Well, if you notice, yesterday and the day before, uh, yesterday we had a closing trend of 1.82. The day before, we had 1.24. Both those trend readings are bullish. Anything but 1.2 on a closing basis is bullish. And really, to help it, you need a down tick readings preferably greater than minus 200 to the downside. Yesterday we had 371. The day before we had 168. So we did actually have panic right at that trend line, when it, right at that jump. And uh, this chart here uh, is the arms index. And I got a three-day, a two-day, a five-day, and the top window is a 10-day. The 10-day is at 1.18. You know, it's close enough. I always say 1.2 or higher is preferable. So on a 10-day average, you got the average daily trend ring of 1.18 for 10 days. Uh, the five days didn't quite reach the bullish scenario, which I call around 1.25, where 1.17, that's the next, or actually, let's start the bottom window. Okay. Uh, to make it more clear. The bottom window is the three-day arms, and you need it like 1.3, or higher, we came in 1.32. The two-day, I like to have 1.5 or higher. We came in 1.8 or 1.54. As a matter of fact, a two-day trend is a buy signal. You get a two-day trend of three or higher, is 
I don't know, 95% of the time, it's a buy signal. Yeah, we had it, that, it was uh, amazing yesterday, yesterday, as you're saying, Tim. I mean, that, that trend was staying at like 1.9 all day long, <laughs> which was, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so they, they were selling that rally. I mean, uh, right. I, I hate to say dumb money, smart money, but uh, that's what you want to see. So you got trend readings now, you know, you got the, the, the two or the, two, uh, yeah, the two day, the three day, and the 10 day all in near bullish or at bullish territories. Five days, not quite there. So, it's, it's, but you know, you got enough panic in here uh, to suggest that the market at, at worst stays sideways and it'll probably rally from here. Uh, so, okay. um, so I'm bullish. So I get um, it. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, but that's, uh, that's the reason why I keep bringing up the monthly chart. You no, know, that, listen, that man, I, 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 I get it. It's, it's, this is a little to me. It's a little dicey right now, but I get it. I, 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 I you know, there's no doubt. You know, those long term signals are a big deal, man. There's, there's no yeah. doubt about it. If if that was showing kind of a bearish a sign in there, then uh, you know I, I might have took that short term position out. But what it says, I'm going to set until this this indicator on the monthly chart chart one shows a divergence. So I hear the music. Stay right so. there, folks. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. We have the Dow down 54, Nasdaq's up 63, S and P's up 12 and a half. We'll come right back, folks. Well, welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow is uh, down 78. Nasdaq's up 52. S&Ps are up 9. Don't forget, folks, tomorrow morning, I'm man, Mr. Larry Pezzavento, 9 to 12. is going to be trading live. Great market to trade live, folks. Check it out the front page of TFNN. Let's get back to our man, Mr. Tim Ord. We are talking markets out here. Okay, Tim, so right now I have the third chart up. All right, yeah, we're, we're kind of... Yeah, we're done. Go to the hey, we had panic. We got panic uh, to, to drive the market higher. Not a great degree of panic, but enough to to keep probably the rally going. So okay. That's enough. Let's flip to chart six. Okay, chart six. There we go. Okay. Yeah, this yeah, is the this one is, I got to look at. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, this is uh, shows divergence. It works actually pretty well. What it is, uh, the bottom window. Is the GDX a cumulative advanced decline? Okay. And the top wind window is a cumulative up down volume, both for GDX. So you got advanced decline and you got a uh, up down volume indicator. So it's pretty much all the statistics that drive uh, a price. Yes. In a, in a price. And in this, in this case, it's for GDX. And what I want to point out here, if you look back in. Um, 2022 August to November that first green area I see that yep right well the market if you look at the GX which is the middle the middle window was it's actually going down it's making lower lows and lower highs and if you look at the bottom window which is advanced decline it was making higher highs and higher lows and the top window which is the up down volume was also making higher highs and higher lows. So that was telling you you're probably going into a low, and it turned out to be the October low. Um, anyhow, that was the bottom, so the market went up. And the next divergence is uh, the, that'd be April, no, it'd be August, uh, yeah, April, May of 2023. Yes. Which is the pink area. Pink, shaded yep, area. okay. And there you, you make a, a double high on GDX, and the top window makes a lower high, which is the up-down volume. And the bottom window is advanced decline. It also makes a lower volume. So that's the negative divergence. And there's there's another one in there I didn't identify. i just seeing it right now. But if you look at late 2023, November to uh Yes, December, I see that. I'll put my cursor there. I have it. Okay. All right. If you notice, the S&P, or S&P's, GDX made a higher high in that range. Yes. November to December. Well, if you look at the yes. top window, uh, it, it made actually a little bit lower high. And you look at the bottom window, it also made a lower high. So it picked out that top of late uh, 2023, Dece late December 2023. Yes. And the market went went down. So I didn't I didn't see that until just now. But anyhow, currently. You know, we got the S or the GDX pulling back to the neckline, and I said we had a sign of strength through that neckline, and, and neckline now should be support to help that idea out. If you notice the top window, you know the market's really pulled back from thirty-seven to thirty-three, 
to pulled back a good, you know, ten percent or better. And this ratio on top is pretty much just going sideways. It's not really pulling back at all. Yes. And same way, same with the cumulative advanced decline. It's pretty much just going sideways. It's not showing weakness either up, down, or down volume. So that gives me, um, I guess that adds to the credibility that probably the neckline or in that vicinity is going to hold support because we're not showing weakness in the up-down volume or the advanced decline on a short-term basis. So this is probably a kind of a normal pullback in an uptrend. So uh, It's got me nervous. Go here. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I said it has me nervous, man. Good. That's, if you weren't nervous, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, no, so, I'm with you, man. I get it. Trust me. Yeah. You know, so always, cause, to me, if I have too much confidence in a trade, a lot of times that trade blows up, so... Yeah, no, no, no. There's no doubt. So the the I know we we really don't talk the dollar a lot, but this dollar Tim just keeps jumping back in its higher range. So it's like, okay, I mean it's up 500 ticks this morning, um, which this market can't stand the dollar going higher. So we'll, we'll see where it shakes out. But this yeah, it's, it's uh, what it's, is, let me ask you this, Tim. What is the so when we when we're taking a look? I mean, when we're taking a look at the the GDX right now, I mean. This is literally actually going into the neckline right now, though, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it, it really shouldn't well, have went this low, really. I mean, I know it's only low by like 50 cents or something, but it's still like, okay, you're starting to bite into this thing a bit, right? Right. Well, yeah, that neckline I, uh, on this chart, I do have a, you know, a dotted uh, blue line right there. Yeah, I see it, yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, it depends how you draw that neckline. You can draw it anywhere from probably 32 to 34. So, and a lot yeah. of times you, you break those trend lines a little bit. Anyhow, no, no, for sure. Yeah. That's where I'm drawing my neckline around this vicinity. So this is probably where it should, uh, should stop, I would say, especially with with these two indicators not really pulling back at all. Right. They're just, right. they, they went up to the high of, uh, on on the top one, it was like 1,500. Yes. And it's just gone sideways. And the bottom one looks like about 1,000, minus 1,000, I guess. And it's just gone sideways. So it's not really showing weakness. It's probably, if you can look at that, from the March low up to the recent high of 37, looks like a five count up. If you do Elliott Wave type stuff, which I'm not very good at. Then you get an ABC down, and to me, this looks like an ABC down, and we're in C wave right now. And a five count up, usually the ABC down bottoms around the wave, the fourth wave. Okay. Uh, the fourth wave. Well, we're at the fourth wave, you know, which is right around that 33, 34 range. You know, that congestion there in GDX. Yes. Back in, um, you know, about a month ago, or whatever. Yep. No, I can see that. I, I I like the I like the amount of support that we have here, you know. But at the same time, I know gold markets on Fridays, man, are not cool. So it's like, okay, are we setting up for a little hit here? But I get it. That's what makes a market. So we'll see. Right. Let's let's, let's flip to chart four. Okay. This is the big. This is a big trend. This is what needs to happen in bull markets, and uh, the. The second window down from the top is the bullish percent index for the gold miners index. So yes. it measures the percent of stocks that are a point and figure bicycle in the gold miners index. I don't know how many, I think there's like 30, maybe 40 stocks in that. I'll have to go back and look. But right now, there's uh, 78 point, about 79% of the stocks in gold miners index we're on point and figure buy signals. So that's a, that's a good percentage. You don't want it to get below uh, 60%. That's okay. Declines can happen. So I got this green area uh, across the chart showing that we're in the bullish area right now. We need to hold that bullish area uh, for the basically this bull move to continue. I hear the music again. So. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I come right back. We have the Dow down 76. NASDAQ's up 51. S&P's up 10. Tim and I come right back, folks. Oh, welcome back, folks. Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you. Go rah, little problem with us out there. We have the Dow down 55. NASDAQ's up 61. S&P's are up 12 and a half. And I have the fourth chart up, Tim. Right. It's uh, long as... Uh, the, uh, the second window down from the top is, again, the bullish percent index for a gold miners index. Right now, it's 
78.57% of the stocks are on point and figure buy signals. So the market in general is actually really strong. And the reason why it needs to hold up here, previous long-term uptrends uh, stay in an uptrend as long as this bullish percent index, gold miners index, stays above 0.6. You don't want to go up uh, 0.6 and come right back down again, which has happened since 2021 and never stuck up there. If you notice... uh, I can see that, yeah. You had a couple of spikes up. Yeah. came right back down again. So I'm thinking, you know, the, was this, this is the fourth time going back 2021, we're back above that. I'm thinking we're going to stick this time. So I mean, it's um, can't. No, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. And explain, it looks, but, Tim, it looks like there's 30 stocks in it, too, by the way. I just I pulled it up during the break. So but I, I, see, what, I see what you're saying. It's a bullish setup. There's no doubt. I guess the real question is, is that we stay up there. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it needs so you know after uh, uh, just technical analysis after consolidation there's an impulse wave. After yes. an impulse wave there's a consolidation phase, and pretty much we've been in a consolidation phase going back on GDX to mid 2020, and we're due for an impulse wave. You know we we've gone really nowhere, uh, roughly speaking, on GDX for the last three four years. So at some point we need to get an impulse wave going. The bottom window is gold, and I, you know it's, I think it's well, obviously it's kind of just broke out to the upside. Impulse wave started on gold, and it's GDX turn to start an impulse wave, either up or down. And obviously I'm thinking up because you know 78 percent of the stocks in gold miners index are on buy signals, so that's a bullish situation. It's going to push. Yes. You know how high is high. I guess I don't know how long this rally is going to last. I don't have that other indicator, the monthly cumulative advanced decline. But previous signals of that one lasted one and a half years, up to four years. So I'm thinking this had this market has all the ingredients that a multi-month, if not a possibly multi-year rally, has started. And a lot of these gold stocks has has really got beat up over the last several years. I mean. Uh, advanced decline has been really uh, sick for that industry. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, we've got inflation, we've got everything else. So we'll see how it how it plays out. Yeah, so. and listen, man, there's, there's no doubt that, and, and you know, what's wild, folks, and Tim, is that when you take the price of the physical metal itself, let's say even today, 2320, um, you know, these miners, they get gold out of the ground a lot cheaper than that. And there just hasn't been buyers, you know. I mean, there's been buyers because we come off that bottom nice. I mean, there's a couple, there's plenty of equities that are already up 150% or 200%, folks. But that's what happens in the gold market <laughs> I mean, off, when you come off a low because there's small numbers. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. But there, there's no doubt that uh, fundamentally these companies are going to make money, man. I mean, this is a, this is a large number. And the same with silver. The same with copper. I mean, copper is a byproduct, you know, in a lot of the silver mines, folks. Okay, so, you know, at four seventy a pound, well, you know, that's that's a big number, man. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, hey, I totally agree with you. Let's just take a look at uh, chart five. Okay, I got five up. It, uh, this is a little kind of a spin. It's a uh, the middle window is the bullish percent index slash GDX ratio. So I did a ratio just to see what comparisons happen. Yes, and if you look. Uh, the reason why, uh, go back to 2009, uh, you know, it actually uh, kind of did pick out the bottom. Uh, but as the market rallied, this ratio went down. And the reason why that ratio went down, I'm thinking all the other cases we have on this chart, you know, ratio pretty much stayed above 2.25 in general, the duration of that bull run. Okay, yes. Yeah, but in 2009, it didn't. Well, the reason why... The bullish percent index, GDX, was going up, as you can see on the chart right below that uh, ratio. But the uh, bullish percent index was going down. There was less stocks on buy signals as that market rallied. That was extremely a a red flag. That's amazing, huh? Wow. There are very few stocks carrying that rally. Right. Uh, 
So that's the reason why that ratio went down. So uh, I didn't know that at the time, 2011, because I didn't get out at the top at the 2011, 2012, or uh, the top. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't have all the indicators I have now. But going into that top, that was an extremely red flag that uh, that whole market was peaking out, and it peaked out in a huge way. So you, you know, it's wild then, what you just said there. I'd love to see... <laughs> <laughs> Keep you busy over the weekend. I'm only kidding, but um, some kind of a ratio because you know what you had just said, Tim, is that inside of the GDX, right? The GDX had kept going up, but yet the there was only a few stocks that were going up. If we ever looked at the S and P, you know, there's four stocks right now that not only weighting wise they're 20 percent of the whole S and P. <laughs> four stocks out of 500. Is that a, well, the, and those are the stocks, of course, that are going up. But that's pretty wild, man. Meaning, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, yeah, hold it. Yeah. Yeah, how, how long can that last? That, that's yeah, a good right. Point to bring up. <laughs> if, if you look at, uh, just take GDX for example, that market went up from 2009 to 2011. Yeah. So far as the S&Ps, how long can that divergence, how long can those, <laughs> you know, very few stocks carry this market up? It could carry it up for the next two years. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but I do see what you say. I do think we're going to go in the top. We're just not having it right. Oh now. yeah, no, 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 no. Listen, man, I just picked so. up when you said. I said, "Oh, that is so intriguing." Because, and I know, of course, the other side of it. Yeah, one stock can carry you for a couple of years for sure. I mean, that's just how the makeup is. I mean, remember the Nasdaq before? I mean, the Nasdaq, Apple was carrying it forever, man. I mean, for years. Yeah. 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 Well, you remember going back in 2000, uh, oh. the market was, was going up. And I think, the, the, I remember the, the only thing carrying that market up back then was the dot, we called it the dot bombs. Oh, yeah. Because, remember, that, I mean, when, that's... When that's, the market that's, peaked, I mean, the dot coms went right through the floor. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, that's, that's when we were trading the OEX because you had, what you had, folks, is this. If you could get, it was Dell, Microsoft, Cisco... What was the last one? Um, oh, I think it was, J it was JDSU. It was one of... Anyway, there were four stocks then, too, folks, okay? If you could get those right, particularly on a Friday afternoon at OEX expiration, <laughs> it was yeah. always getting interesting, man. And then, of course, as you said, just about everything fell apart, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. everything. So, Amaz so and Amazon went down 90%, folks. You know, yeah. uh, it, it, we may be setting up to that in the... You know, I, I think this year's fine. Next year, I don't know. Oh yeah, no, you know. I'm not. I'm not looking for that. That was just a. Uh, you know, I, I think we're yeah. in much better shape than that. There's no doubt about that. That ain't close. I mean, when I was looking at it, the amazing part about that, Tim, like, and folks, Amazon went down ninety percent, nine zero. <laughs> Didn't we all wish wow. we bought it then? Yeah, nine ninety percent, Tim. Isn't that amazing, man? I know. Yeah. And of course, wow. then it, it went up and never looked back. Well, listen, Tim. You have a great one, safe one. Hey, happy Father's Day, man. And we'll Great, you too. Thank you. And we'll talk to you next Tuesday. All right. Talk to you then. Okay. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow's down 62, Nasdaq's up 62, S&P's up 12. We'll come right back.